Kevon Lee and Jamari Button are both in the transfer portal, and Penn State is going to be just fine. You are Locked On Nittany Lions, your daily podcast on the Penn State Nittany Lions, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Nittany Lions your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast. Today's episode is sponsored by LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash Locked On College. That is LinkedIn.com slash Locked On College to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. My name is Zach Seiko, your host as always. Penn State is down a running back and a linebacker potentially. As they've entered the transfer portal, they could both come back to Penn State, but I don't think that's going to be the case here. Kevon Lee and Jamari Budden are both in the portal. Uh, Also in this episode, as we open up with that, we are going to discuss more about Penn State football, the transfer portal situation, as I welcome back special guest Adam Sheets, Penn State men's basketball insider with Penn State's Com Radio. And we're also going to discuss Micah Shrewsbury and the Nittany Lions as they just picked up a win against Indiana and they take on Wisconsin over in Madison tomorrow. That should be an exciting game. But Kevon Lee announced he is in the transfer portal Friday evening, and it makes perfect sense. I mean, this is one that uh, everyone was buying into because Nicholas Singleton and Katron Allen uh, had taken over. You know, Kevon Lee was the starter at the beginning of the season, and then he was third string by the end of the year. Didn't even see the field. I, I mean, there's just a lot to it. And you thought there would be a balance of powers, if you will. Kevon Lee... Uh, took at least a majority of the reps and the snaps week one. I mean, that was no surprise. He was the veteran in the backfield, and he caught the game-winning touchdown pass against Purdue. They didn't turn to Singleton and Allen in that game. They turned to Kevon Lee, but that's probably because he was the most mature at that time. But uh, it also seemed like he was the real deal in in 2020. He was going to be the guy that was at least going to be maybe a featured back or someone that you could split reps with. Uh, That didn't happen in 2021 as uh, he and Noah Kane uh, didn't really lead that great of a backfield. But it it felt like, okay, Kevon Lee is someone that you can at least feature. uh, And then you have maybe somebody behind him. Well, Singleton and Allen took over. Uh, That's really that's really all there is to it. Nicholas Singleton and Katron Allen are just that much more talented. They're that much better. And, and I don't think Kevon Lee was two more years of eligibility left. Really wants to play second fiddle, third fiddle uh, to these two guys, um, especially with they're only going to get better. You know, it's not like they're on their way out the door. Uh, Kevon Lee is the veteran and Singleton and Allen. It's their backfield for the next two seasons. And, and it seemed like he really wanted to stay. This is what's interesting to me because if you look at Kevon Lee's social media, uh, Lee did not give any indications that he was going to leave, that he he hates Penn State, that he wanted out. Uh, everything was, it was passive, but it never indicated that he, he just, the second that there was an exit, he wanted to go uh, because it, it was just an interesting season for him. He missed games. He, he was playing frequently up until the point that he got hurt uh, and he was banged up. We saw him leave the Auburn game. We saw him leave the Michigan game. That's where it got really bad uh, was the game against Michigan. Uh, but things kind of started, uh, started to go downhill for him against Auburn and he just never really made his way back. And, and that's what I find so interesting because he was available this whole time. He practiced, he was in pregame warmups but for some reason, he never made it back onto the football field. I, I'm not saying he was held out for the season. Maybe he tried to give it a go and just could never do that. He was never 100%. And the coaching staff said, all right, we're not going to force you in there. If you're 60 or 70%, it's not worth it. We'll, we'll turn to Tank Smith because when James Franklin in his press conferences uh, talked about injuries, he brought up that Kevon Lee was available. Didn't say he was going to play. He just said he was available. We're, we're going to have him. Uh, and did not see the field, you know, that I think that was the telling sign of uh, if Kevon Lee was 99% there in the transfer portal, that's what ultimately put him over the top because Tank Smith got those late game carries. It wasn't Kevon Lee. Again, we don't know what we don't know. So I'm not going to sit here and speculate how serious the injury was. Maybe Kevon Lee had some issues. I, I don't, I don't know for sure. We just know that he was in pregame warmups. He practiced, 
was available to come back, and he never saw the football field after that. Uh, like I said, he's got two years of eligibility left. Uh, and on Twitter, I guess we can't really use that as a as a source of where he might go since uh, he had me he had me fooled anyway that he was going to come back to Penn State. And I really thought he did just based on what he said on social media. Uh, however, he, he did say that he is watching Coach Prime. He was watching. He retweeted uh, Coach Deion Sanders which means that maybe he's headed to Colorado, which I'm okay with because that takes him out of the Big Ten. Uh, Kevon Lee's a good back. He is a downfield runner. I think his biggest problem was he thought he was faster than he than he is. He tried to do too much east and west when he just ran downhill, when he just ran straight. Uh, he was good for six, seven, eight yards. He was tough to tackle. It was great with yards after contact. That's what I would say about Kevon Lee. I have no disrespect or ill will towards him, and I hope he lands on his feet wherever. Just get out of the Big Ten. I, I don't I don't want to face him as a Penn State fan. Uh, Jamari Button is that other player, linebacker. Uh, so you have the opposites of each other at the positions. And Jar Jamari Button's case... Uh, is a little bit similar, uh, but he is younger. He's a redshirt coming off his redshirt freshman season. He's got three years of eligibility left, and everyone looked to for him to be the next breakout linebacker. And you know what? I I don't blame anybody for for saying that. Um, and it had taken him a while to enter the transfer portal. I thought he was going to be one of the first ones to go. Uh, but from what I've gathered, he wanted to play in the Rose Bowl, and he stuck it out was around, wanted to be around his teammates, but that was really his main goal, play in the Rose Bowl, get that, and then go into the transfer portal. I just thought he would have been one of the first people to announce, uh, and, and kudos to him, uh, very respectable to just stick it out and be with his friends and, and his football family, you know? But at the end of the day, I'm not surprised because uh, Jamari Budden, like I said, was expected to take that next step, but instead that went to Kobe King, that went to Tyler Elsden. That went to Abdul Carter. And Jamari Budden really just couldn't compete with that anymore. We even saw Keon Wiley get some late reps in games. In the Rose Bowl in particularly, uh, Jamari Budden wasn't the one out there at linebacker. Yeah, he was on special teams. But uh, it was Keon Wiley who was getting those reps where Budden should have been at the will linebacker position. He was just playing special teams. Uh, and you never really saw him in garbage time. Uh, there were hints that he just got lost in the depth chart between the players that I named uh, and just not really seeing him when the opportunities were there for him to get extra reps. And then you have three high end recruits coming in. You have KV on keys. You have Tamir Robinson. You have Tony Rojas. There's no more room for a guy like Jamari button because those are Manny Diaz guys. Now he's a Brent pry guy, Jamari button. So could he go to Virginia tech? Uh, he saw the writing on the wall, so could he end up with the Hokies since Brent Pry is now the head coach there? Uh, he already has posted that he has an offer from Bowling Green and that he's got an offer from West Virginia. Ooh, very interesting. If Budden were to go to the Mountaineers and be a starter or at least a key contributor for West Virginia early on, it'd be fun if uh, he comes back to Beaver Stadium for week one. Devin Carter's already over there, so there, there's already a little bit just some there, there's some hype to it. Uh, let's just say that, even though I think Penn State will have no problems winning that game. This is locked on Nittany Lions. We are talking some more Penn State football, the transfer portal. Get Adam Sheets' thoughts on both Kevon Lee, the running back situation, Jamari Button, and the linebacker situation. Also, an inside look at Penn State men's basketball as they're back to 500 in the Big Ten. It's all coming up next. Today's episode is sponsored by LinkedIn Jobs. As a small business owner or hiring manager, you know that success in 2023 all depends on the team members that you surround yourself with. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. With LinkedIn Jobs, you can hire qualified candidates for more efficiently by matching open roles with people who have the skills, values, and experiences to help achieve your goals. LinkedIn Jobs helps you attract qualified candidates to your open jobs with targeting tools. They go beyond resume data by using insights from your job post, company, and their 875 million member profiles to post your job in front of the most qualified candidates. Identify the most qualified candidates on LinkedIn Jobs and connect with them fast and for free. LinkedIn Jobs, it makes it easy to screen and rate applicants based on your job qualifications all on one platform. That's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering qualified hires 
versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That is linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Thanks again for making Locked On Nittany Lions your first listen every single day. Make sure you check out the brand new show on the Locked On Podcast Network, and that is Locked On College Basketball. Everything you need to know about college basketball in one place, big name experts, insiders, coaches, and players, all of it on Locked On College Basketball, available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasting. And my name is Zach Seiko, your host of Locked On Nittany Lions, and always a great time whenever I can have Adam Sheets Join me on the other side, Com Radio, Penn State Men's Basketball Insider, also covered football in the fall uh, for Penn State's Com Radio, is back on the show. Adam, thanks so much for your time again. Thanks for having me. It's been a very exciting time for both Penn State football and men's basketball right now. A lot going on over there in Happy Valley. Yeah, uh, Penn State fresh off of a win against Indiana. They're going to be playing Wisconsin. I got you for two segments today. We're going to start off with Penn State football and then get into those most recent games for the Nittany Lions and Micah Shrewsbury. But uh, it was kind of a slow news cycle for Penn State. Then the Devin Carter situation happens. And uh, boy, what a what a cluster. This is a clean show. So what a what a cluster uh, <laughs> that was. And then Jamari Budden is in the transfer portal and Kevon Lee is in the transfer portal. So uh, kind of some some subtractions here. Uh, I, I want your opinion first on the wide receiver situation. Uh, Devin Carter, uh, Penn State seems to be pretty lacking uh, at the time in this episode. I can't imagine that Tyrone Broden or Dante Cephas or anybody else is going to make a commitment to Penn State to boost that passing attack. So in your opinion, what all is going on here? Why don't wide receivers want to come play at Penn State? Why has it been a struggle for them to get guys to come play with Drew Aller uh, and this offense? Yeah, I think it's weird because obviously, as you said, Drew Aller's a big arm quarterback, makes a lot of plays with his arm, and he seems really excited. Number one quarterback in the country. A lot of wide receivers, you think, would want to play with a guy like yep. that. And Penn State's an offense that likes to throw the ball. That's what Mike Yersick kind of likes to do. I don't know, maybe if it's the way they went with the tight ends this year, playing a lot of tight end sets, which really take wide receivers off the field. Now, they did that out of necessity. They didn't have a lot of depth at the wide receiver position. And also, they have a lot of freshmen that are really good. You look at Caden Saunders, who did not play a lot this year. Amari Evans did not play a lot this year. Harrison Wallace III is going to be back as well. So there's some young guys in that room that maybe Penn State's looking at, thinking they're going to take that next step. So there's a lot of moving pieces there at Penn State. You, everyone knew you kind of want to add, especially a big body wide receiver. That's what Devin was going to be for them just unable to get him. And I think Devin Carter, obviously now going over to West Virginia, his first game for the Mountaineers will be in Beaver Stadium against Penn State. So there's a little irony there. Uh, but, you know, it's a tough loss for Penn State. It's something, you know, Coach Franklin's really going to have to start looking at because they're going to want to maybe get some more weapons to really open up that offense in Drew Aller's first year at the helm. They're looking for depth because I don't think it's a lack of belief in the younger guys. They definitely need experience. And they need guys that can rotate in and out. I don't think Penn State's really content. And, and this goes kind of, I, I used to always emphasize it on the defensive line, that they they always want group A to be as fresh as possible and then group B. And, and then they'd cycle them in. They don't mix and match. They don't say, okay, one defensive end's going in this time and then another DT. They keep group A together and then group B. That seems to be the case when all guys are healthy. Uh, when guys are missing, you have to mix and, mix and match. Uh, but that's, I think, what Penn State wants to do at wide receiver. And ultimately, when we get to running back in just a second with Kevon Lee, uh, there's you mentioned a lot of great names that I, I think can step up big if they have a good offseason. And that's Evans. That's Saunders. I, I really like Saunders. I think he could be that that slot wide receiver. Um, I've made the comparison to KJ Hamler, but apparently I. And this is the benefit of working with Steve Jones and Penn State football. And he says that's not a fair comparison because KJ was so much faster. If you can believe mm -hmm. that it's not that Caden Saunders is slow. It's that KJ just had really good straight line speed, but where Saunders is really good is quick feet route running and being able to break open. So even though he's a smaller build receiver, he can actually get some separation right off the line of scrimmage. Uh, anybody that I didn't name that you think can step up. That's already in house for Penn state. Forget about the transfer portal for just a second, Adam. 
Well, I think the obvious one's Keandre Lambert Smith. You know, he's a guy that, you know, had a huge Rose Bowl. He's a guy who's been a starter the last like two years. I think he started a little bit three years ago as well. So he's kind of been in the program, really knows the offense. And he's going to be that veteran wide receiver right now. If they don't add another guy through the portal that they're going to rely on to really kind of lead that room by a leadership example, losing Mitchell Tinsley and Parker Washington, it's going to be his room to run with a lot of young guys around him. So he's going to be huge for them. I think he's a big one. You kind of hit it on Caden Saunders and a thing with Saunders is he's roommates with Drew Aller. They know each other really well. They throw a lot together. They have a really good relationship. And when you look at those two with the way Saunders is, really smart receiver, gets out of his routes. If Drew Aller is going to be able to have that security blanket like a Caden Saunders, just knowing where he's going to be and able to put it on, that's going to be huge for him and really open up that entire offense. Are there any kind of out of left field names that you think could step up in the passing game? Somebody that nobody, nobody thinks of? Um, I don't know if we're going to have that. I don't think Penn State's really a team that you you would really hope maybe someone really comes out of the wings. There's They've had that a couple times where a guy you really aren't talking about in the offseason. Somehow you go through spring, it's like, oh, wow, you know, there's a guy that gave Malik Manga, who's still with the program right now. He was had a lot of hype coming into this season, really did not live up to those expectations. Maybe he can take yeah. that next step with another summer. I'm sure Coach Frank would really hope because he is a big body wide receiver and really yeah. helps them. Um, and that's a need they have and I think the tight end room is going to have to be big again you're going to have Theo Johnson and you're going to have Tyler Warren they're going to have to be really big for them to be a really strong unit and be able to run those two tight end sets and be able to get that production like they did this year with Brenton Strange and those two as well yeah why I think Malik Mega is kind of that that outside and not necessarily just I think people might have wrote written him off because mm -hmm. uh was on and off the field saw him a lot on special teams uh, and then was injured did not play uh, in the Rose Bowl so that's somebody that I hope can have a breakout season in 2023 Adam Sheets Penn State a men's basketball insider for Com Radio joining me on the show today and before we get to men's basketball in just a moment uh, Adam I also want to ask you about Kevon Lee transferring out uh, at least his name's in the portal he could opt to come back but does this mean that Penn State is in the market for uh, a running back now since if Nicholas Singleton and Katron Allen go down at any time I don't like I don't like doing that I don't like speaking it into existence but it could be a harsh reality if one of them's not available and then the depth chart really shrinks without Kevon Lee. What do you think the situation sets up there? I think they're in a very similar position at running back as they are at quarterback. They have a really, really good young player. For quarterback, they have Drew Allen. Running back, they have Nicholas Singleton and Katron Allen. Those two players are really, really good. So you're, But you want to look in the portal now, especially when you're losing Kevon Lee, that you know if you have injury situations or maybe just having another guy that's maybe a little different can change the way the game's being played would really help. The problem is when guys are in the portal, it's usually because they want to go and they want to be a featured back. And with those two, it's going to be hard to get those – feature carries. Now, Penn State's done it with rotating running backs a lot. You know, a lot of guys getting a lot of opportunities. They have one of the best one-two punches at running back. I could see them look, maybe if there's a veteran in the portal that wants to come to like a championship level team, because that's where Penn State, I'm sure, sees themselves as a team that can compete for a national championship next season. Um, you're going to look maybe to add a guy for depth, like you said, but it's definitely a hard situation to try to convince a guy in the portal to come to Penn State when you know you have two featured backs that are both sophomores. I think a grad transfer type of guy that's mm -hmm. maybe looking to get a specific type of degree that Penn State excels in. I mean, I think uh, people don't realize how much academics uh, is involved in some of these decisions like Hunter Norzad. He's finishing his graduate degree, uh, and that's part of the reason why he's back for another season at Penn State. He has the eligibility, but that's why he didn't move on to the NFL. He's got things to finish first. Um, but I, I think the depth chart is just really thin afterwards. It's like no offense to Tank Smith, but uh, he's not the level of Kevon Lee, and he's Definitely not the level of Nicholas Singleton and Katron Allen. Uh, but bo those two guys as 18 year olds stayed very healthy and they were very good at protecting themselves uh, in, in the way. And it, and it really feels like, you know, when players try to protect themselves in the game of football, Adam, it feels like they, they lose a gear. And that wasn't the case with Katron Allen and Singleton. I, I mean, they were always in the fifth or sixth gear. I, uh, and were able to protect themselves and keep themselves upright. Uh, a final note for Penn State football, and that that's the linebacker position. And why I kind of saved it for last is because I'm not worried since Curtis Jacobs is back. Uh, they're getting incredible guys from the class of 2023 with KB on keys and Tony Rojas and Tamir Robinson. So the, the depth is fine, but uh, some people were led to believe, including myself, uh, Jamari Budden, 
uh, seemed to be like a guy that could take a next step uh, in the rotational role because uh, a Charlie catcher is uh, expected not to be back. And, and you, so you do lose those guys that would come in and give you a, a handful of plays and Jamari buttons on his way out. But I will admit this. I'm not surprised. I, I from just what I knew about, you know, how he was working in practices and just being kind of a special teamer. Like you didn't really see him on the field a whole lot at linebacker. And so it led me to believe, this is somebody that's probably going to be in the transfer portal at the end of the season. Yeah, I mean, Jamari Budden was in a tough situation, especially when Curtis Jacobs announced that he's coming back for another season at Penn State. That, again, yeah. takes a lot of snaps away. You obviously have Kobe King, who had a really good season this year, and then Abdul Carter, the guy everyone's talking about, might be the best linebacker in that room, just such a breakout season for him. And like you said, they're adding a lot of young guys, so Jamari Budden really thinking, I'm going to have to sit, wait my term another year, and then there's these other guys coming in that are just as good and really highly tatted recruits that they expect a lot from, and they're Manny Diaz guys, which is is another thing that maybe Jamari Button was thinking about that Manny Diaz is bringing in his own recruits. Now, if he stays here for a little longer, those guys he trusts, he recruited them, he knows them very well. So there's a lot of that situation coming in. And Jamari Button, just doing what's best for him. Understand that Penn State has a very loaded linebacker room. Maybe try to go somewhere else where he can get on the field. I think he's a very talented player. Just Penn State, they're so loaded at the linebacker position right now. They're going to be really tough next season at that position. It was just going to be hard to find playing time with that group. Yeah, Jamario, I could see him at a place like Virginia Tech because mm -hmm. he is a Brent Pry guy, so that's an excellent point. It is Adam Sheets on the other side, Penn State men's basketball insider for Penn State's Com Radio. I am Zach Seiko, your host of Locked on Nittany Lions, and we're doing just that, talking about the Nittany Lions and Micah Shrewsbury. On the hardwood, they just picked up a win against Indiana, and we're going to talk a little bit about Wisconsin on the other side. Today's episode is sponsored by Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all of your sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there there from pro football to college basketball we've got it all at betonline.net and if you love sports podcasts you can even find those at bet online as well we're always the fastest and easiest way to get your sports betting info so head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more bet online where the game starts Welcome back to Locked on Nittany Lions. I'm Zach Seiko. He is Adam Sheets, special guest on the show today. And we finished up talking about Penn State football. Now we're going to inspect Penn State men's basketball, who uh, went on a little bit of a losing streak, losing to a, a top-ranked Purdue team. Now that, that has middled out. They were number one when that game was played, but they also uh, did lose prior to that, but they did beat Penn State. That was the more important part of it. And then they lost to Michigan. That was... Really no surprise because, uh, like myself, and I think everybody that follows this team closely, Adam, is that Penn State was going to struggle with teams who were very sound in the front court. And if there are any two teams that are sound in the front court, it is Michigan with Hunter Dickinson, who's seven foot two, and Zach Eady, who's seven foot four and nearly 300 pounds. Uh, and it's just, I, I like the way they've held their own. They, they let them get theirs, but just what was really disappointing to me was the fact that Zach Eady went off for 30 points after you held Hunter Dickinson uh, mostly in check. Again, he's going to get his against this Penn State team, but 17 points compared to what Eady did in the palestra. Uh, and then they bounce back against Indiana. So how much stock should I take in the fact that there still seems to be a little bit of a gap between Penn State and, and the top half of this Big Ten conference? Uh, Penn State did not play good in those two games. The big thing was they didn't hit shots, and you knew they were going to be undersized. You knew they were going to give up a lot of points in the paint defensively, but their equalizer of that was always going to be the three-point ball, Andrew Funk, Miles Dredd, the guys who can really shoot it. We're going to keep them in the game. Andrew Funk had two really struggling games shooting the basketball against yep. Michigan and Purdue, and he just really couldn't get it going, and no one really could against Purdue, just couldn't buy a bucket at the start of the second half, allowed Purdue to really – take lead because a lot of people forget Penn State was winning that game at halftime. They were up by six going to the break. And then Purdue came out with a quick 12-0 run in the palestra and never looked back. They were able to get inside. They were knocking down their shots. Purdue had a great game plan and executed it very well. And that's how they were able to get that win. Michigan, very similar way. Michigan was very disciplined. It was a little different. Michigan got out to the big lead early. Penn State was playing from behind, trying to fight back. And I think the big thing, Coach Shrewsbury's mentioned this a lot. They have a lot of seniors. They're the, and According to Ken Palm, they're the oldest team in the country 
and they just sometimes don't play like that. They don't really have that poise. And that kind of frustrates him a little bit with all these seniors, but it's a little different for Penn State because a lot of these guys haven't played together. Cameron Winter and Andrew Funk are new to this team, which makes things a little different as well. So they really had two bad games against two good teams. Michigan and Purdue are two very good teams in the Big Ten, and they were able to bounce back and get that win against Indiana, which was just huge for this program because if you drop three straight in Big Ten play, it was definitely going to be tough to rebound and try to get back on track. 85 to 66 uh, Penn State uh, beating Indiana in the Bryce Jordan Center now, but Indiana came in with a, a long injury. Well, I don't know if it was long necessarily, but missing a lot of key guys, mm -hmm. you, you know, uh, missing uh, Race Thompson, Xavier Johnson, yep. and then you get Trace Jackson Davis back, who I think could give Penn State fits. I mean, he's given a lot of other team fits. And I said, man, the, you know, this is a guy that could also score 25 or 30. And he was held in the teens. And Penn State, again, blew Indiana out of the building. So, uh, but I don't know if, if Penn State, if Indiana's healthy, does Penn State even win that game if they have all five starters? It's a lot different. I mean, it was going to be hard for Indiana because Indiana is not a team that shoots the three ball well. And Penn State hit a school record 18 threes. They shot the lights out. I mean, it was hard to acknowledge. Andrew Funk went nuts. Seth Lundy got hot really, really early in that game. And when Penn State shoots that well, there's not many teams in the country that are going to be able to beat them. You're going to look at top echelon teams. They would struggle with Penn State when they shoot the ball to that caliber. It's, you can't bank on that every game. Penn State's not going to show up every game and hit 18 threes. But they were able to do that. They did a good job limiting trade. Jackson Davis because he's a little different than Dickinson and Edie. He's a guy oh, yeah. who's a little more athletic. He's a guy who wants to play outside. He's not just going to sit you in the post back down, look to get those post hook. He does things a little differently. So Penn State's undersized guys, kind of like a Keba Jai, who's not really big because he's a freshman, can play a little bit of defense there. Evan Mahaffey can get away with a little bit more. Miles Dredd can body Trace Jackson Davis up and give him more problems than he can do with a Zach Edie. So there was that aspect of it. And Penn State played the perfect game, really, in the Bryce Jordan Center. Indiana did not play well, did not shoot the ball well from the foul line or from behind the arc in the first half. And we think they had one made three and it was because they reviewed it as they were going to the locker room to give them a three pointer. So, I mean, they just were not shooting the ball. Well, Penn state had a perfect game plan. And as you said, when Andrew Funk shoots the ball like that, there's not many teams in the country that are going to beat them, especially in the big 10. Penn state men's basketball. Adam sheets is our special guest today. And we're talking Nittany Lions, Micah Shrewsbury in this Penn state basketball team that is 500 in the big 10. Uh, they're 12 and five overall. And they got an important game coming up against Wisconsin. Uh, and that's out in Madison. So uh, they're also a little banged up there with at least they were without their best player against Indiana and go figure. We're talking the Hoosiers. The Hoosiers actually beat up on Wisconsin uh, when they returned back to Bloomington. Uh, so this is going to be a low scoring game. You and I kind of said this before we uh, jumped on the show here, Adam. But what ultimately are you expecting uh, wall to be out are you expecting wisconsin to really uh, adjust the system and be prepared for penn state uh, how does penn state enter this matchup with another team that's just not 100 percent um, it's going to be interesting because if Tyler Wall's out, that really changes the way Wisconsin plays. He's one of their best players. Him and Chucky Hepburn really are the two guys that really get this team where they need to be. And without Tyler Wall, it puts a lot of pressure on Chucky Hepburn in the way they're going to play. Uh, but it's going to be an interesting matchup because Wisconsin, obviously one of the slowest teams in the country. They play good half-court defense, execute their offense. It's really not individuals. It's a team of five guys that can rotate in and out, which helps them when a guy gets injured. They're able to quickly plug a guy in. He can run the system and do a good job probably not to the level that Tyler Wall can do but able to be able to be consistent in that game against Indiana it was a really slow game to start Indiana jumped out to a 20 to 2 run in the second half to really open that thing up and get the win by 18 so Wisconsin's going to have to stay smart but if Penn State shoots the ball well it's going to be hard for Wisconsin to play with them because they're not going to be able to go point for point with Penn State if Penn State gets hot. They're going to have to rely on that defense, make this an ugly game, which Wisconsin does better than anybody in the country, making it ugly, keeping it low scoring. Penn State, they play ugly games at the Kohl Center. They really have struggled. Last year was in the 50s, really low scoring game. And they played a game back in 2011 that was 36 to 33 in the Big Ten tournament. So these two teams are known to play ugly basketball games where neither team scores the basketball well. So if it's an ugly game, advantage Wisconsin. If Penn State's able to knock down shots, turn this into an up and down game, which is really hard to do against Wisconsin, Penn State could have a lot of success out there. If Wall does happen to be out of this game, I do like Penn State's chances a lot more because that point 
stuck out to me, Adam, is that Wisconsin can't go point for point. They can't go toe to toe. And, and Penn State's going to really have to speed the game up because a lot of people will assume that it's going to be that that game from last year out in Madison. I remember watching that on the Big Ten uh, network and it was what, 17 to 14 at halftime. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, and there was so much to it. Penn State uh, had a late flight. It, the weather was bad. They only showed up. I think three hours before tip off and really had to accelerate the, the pregame warmups. It was just, it was a mess and people in real time didn't know what was going on and why that game was so slow. Um, but that was also a much different team. You know, Mike, at Shrewsbury, why I love him as a head coach and why Penn state's fortunate to have him is it doesn't matter what kind of talent he has. He adapts the system to them uh, and and it's shown from year one to year two now as they are faster they pass the ball a lot more and, and the offense can go through any single player even though it starts with Jalen Pickett um, I, I do like Penn State in this game obviously if Wall is out uh, but that is yet to be seen uh, this the show will go up before uh, Wisconsin makes a decision on him yeah, I, I agree with you. If Tyler Wall's out, advantage Penn State because Tyler Wall's such a good player. I think he's one of the most underrated players in the Big Ten. A lot of people don't talk about him or Wisconsin when you talk about individual players because it's the system, because it's yeah. a bunch of guys. It could be any different guy, any different game. Uh, but when you look at the way he plays, he's so important offensively and defensively inside and out. He makes a lot of things problems. He could be a problem for Penn State if he plays. If not, Penn State's going to have the ability to put Evan Mahaffey, who's played really well over the last few games, at yes. that five position as a small ball center and get up and down. Because Evan Mahaffey's a guy who can play center, but he played point guard in high school, can bring the ball up the floor, get you in your offense. They can do so many different things. And their offense puts so much pressure on a team, especially in the half court like Wisconsin, because Jalen Pickett, if he can get a mismatch, get in the post, you have to decide how you're going to guard him. Are you going to help, which leaves the shooters open, or you let him go one-on-one -on -one and try to see what he can do? Because he's a guy, if he gets going, could easily score 30 40 points in a blink of an eye so you have to watch out with the way Penn State plays if they knock down shots Wisconsin's going to be in a lot of trouble it's going to have to limit them play good defense make this an ugly game as we keep saying that's how Wisconsin's going to have to stand it and for Penn State speed it up get open looks and knock them down like they're capable of and they could have a lot of success and get another quad one win which would be huge for this team Adam, before I let you go, I always appreciate your time and your insight as you are the expert for Penn State men's basketball. Uh, where can people follow your work and keep up to date with you? At Sheets Adam, we'll have all the information you'll need for Penn State men's basketball as they're trying to make a run here in the Big Ten season. All right. Awesome. And I bet you're feeling pretty good after that Jacksonville win. The other oh, day. They, they had me in the first half. I'm not going to lie. Did. But... They did. <laughs> they had everybody in the first <laughs> half. It was a great comeback for the Jacksonville Jaguars, so we'll just go with that. You're also the uh, Jags' number one fan, super fan. I think I'm the only Jacksonville fan in central Pennsylvania. So, <laughs> Well, they're lucky to have you, and we're lucky to have you here whenever you jump on Locked on Nittany Lines. So thank you again, Adam. Thanks for having me, Zach. Always a pleasure. Thanks again for making Locked on Nittany Lines your first listen today but you got to make this one your second listen. Make sure you check out our brand new podcast on the Locked On Podcast Network, and that is Locked On College Basketball. Everything you need to know about college basketball in one place. Experts, insiders, coaches, and players, the big names all in one spot. That is Locked On College Basketball, available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the show on YouTube or continue to follow and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. You can also follow the show on Twitter at Locked On Nittany. You can follow my personal Twitter at Zach underscore Seiko. A big thank you again to Adam Sheets. Follow him and his work on his Twitter account uh, as we like to have him back on the show frequently to get that inside scoop on the men's basketball team. And that is all going to be coming up. Either playing Wisconsin tomorrow and we're going to see how it unfolds from there because they need to start stacking these wins. And, and Penn State football, <laughs> oh man, they had quite the interesting day Sunday. It was quite the news cycle yesterday. And with players coming in, coaches leaving, we got plenty to talk about on this show all week. So for the latest Penn State football, men's basketball, and all the sporting news, keep it locked right here on Locked On Nittany Lions.